Okay, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is February 23rd, uh, and this is the US-EU uh, edition of it. Um, today we have uh, myself, Bruno Verachten, and uh, Sayantan uh, Mondal, which is exciting. Uh, I think, is this your first time joining us, Sayantan? Uh, no, this is not my first time. It's my Great. third. Awesome. Welcome back then in that case. Um, I've been having some weird issues or I'm out late the last few weeks. So if I haven't seen you, I'm sorry. I apologize now. Um, but yeah, great to have you here. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, today on the agenda, I had a few action items. Uh, FOSDEM recaps by our wonderful Jenkins participants. Uh, the Google Summer of Code participation announcement has gone live. Uh, and we also have opened up our uh, CD Foundation Awards issues. And we'll talk more about that. Uh, first item on the list after the action items is the Jenkins Awards for 2023. So we'll talk about uh, the ins and outs of that and just some general information about it, what you can do to nominate, where to go, all that sort of stuff. Um, we'll talk briefly about the documentation transition to Java 17. Uh, there's some, a new release of WN12 coming out, which is going to change how things uh, are going to be written and constructed for the documentation. but it's in the best interest of everyone. Uh, something that we've been discussing the last couple of weeks is an end of life checklist. So um, when something is reaching end of life, what are the areas we check? What are the repositories we should refer to? What kind of things should we be looking out for in place and um, instances could this be potentially used in? Um, so we've got some idea, some uh, items that are coming to end of life within the next year, uh, and then some of the checklist ideas. Uh, next is prep for CentOS 7 end of life. Uh, this is something that Mark has been proposed, has proposed. Um, there are some tickets to track the work for this, but um, it's still in the proposal stage. So nothing concrete uh, has really been happening on that front. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, Google Summer of Code preparation. Uh, and we've got a couple of updates on the participation in our status as a mentor organization uh, and some just if anyone has questions or ideas or anything they want to share about the projects or Google Summer of Code in general, uh, we'll have time for that too. Uh, is there anything else that would be good to add to the agenda or does that cover everything uh, for today as far as everyone's concerned? Fine with me, say and done. Okay. No, fine with me, yes. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, first things first, uh, the action items. So we have three new blog posts to talk to uh, highlight. Uh, what, the first one is the FOSDEM recap. Um, so FOSDEM uh, is an event that's held in Brussels. Uh, and this was a great chance for a bunch of Jenkins team members to go and interact with the open source community. Um, so you can see here, Damien, Bruno, Stefan, and Alexander Brandis all hanging out at the Jenkins booth, having fun, interacting with people, lots of crowds. Um, and they gave some really great insights as to you know their experience and time at FOSDEM. So just a really nice recap to, to showcase what we were able to do and, and just FOSDEM in general. Um, and thanks to the to all the participants and uh, folks who made this possible for the Jenkins booth. I know Alyssa uh, did a lot of work organizing and getting things um, set up so that we were we were successful. So um, yeah, big thanks to everyone and uh, just a great response and crowd. If I'm not mistaken, based on what I've heard, Bruno, you can uh, attest to that for sure. Yes, you're right. Uh, we had a huge crowd for the whole weekend and people were really enthusiastic about Jenkins. It was my first time at FOSDEM for uh, Jenkins and I was a little bit afraid of people coming to round, you know, not happy about Jenkins, but no, that did not happen one time. People were just spreading love. We do love Jenkins. Okay, it's sometimes ugly. Sometimes documentation is missing some parts, but it works. So that was cool. <laughs> nice. It's always nice when things work. I'm sure people appreciate that fact. Uh, it's reliable. Everyone likes reliableness. So reliability. Uh, great. So yeah, so that's the first blog post. Um, the second one here is our Google Summer of Code participation announcement. Um, this just went live a little bit earlier. 
And essentially, we've been selected as one of the mentoring organizations for Google Summer of Code 2023. Uh, and this is our, our blog post to announce and celebrate that fact. Um, thanks to Jean-Marc Maisen for creating the blog post and putting all this together. Um, and Alyssa Tong for helping organize and get this together as well. They've, they're two, they are two of the org admins, along with Bruno. Uh, for the Google Summer of Code and Jenkins. And uh, just so far, it's been a really great experience. They're doing a wonderful job of organizing and uh, engaging with everyone. Uh, and again, this is just a blog post to celebrate and announce uh, our participation. Jean-Marc's also gone ahead and included some information about next steps, how to apply, if you wanna be a mentor, uh, the timeline, which is really helpful. Um, yeah, just a lot, just like a lot of good inf information. Uh, and there are links to other posts that we have for call for mentors, information for mentors. Um, we had a previous one about talking about being a mentor and what that entails. So um, just a lot of good information here to get us ready for Google Summer of Code. Uh, and again, uh, thanks to Alyssa for the nice uh, collage of all the mentors that we have signed up. Uh, really nice to see. Uh, and we are still accepting project proposals. Um, we'll get to that a little bit more when we get to the Google Summer of Code section, but um, we're, we've been announced. That doesn't mean anything's set in stone yet besides the fact that we're participating. There are still plenty of time for uh, people to submit ideas, proposals, uh, applications to be mentors, et cetera. So. Yep, uh, we still can communicate via the community Jenkins.io, uh, via the mm -hmm. Gitter uh, channel. And we have lots of meetings and one which is called the uh, Office Hours meeting, which is every Thursday. It was uh, three hours maybe from now, 4 p.m. UTC. Yeah, you got it. So if ever you are interested, just join the Zoom meeting and um, let us know why you're interested. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big, uh, good point, Bruno. And, and in uh, addition to that, we have the document here, the agenda. Um, all the meetings will be recorded, so they'll be available on YouTube after the fact as well. Uh, so even if that 4 p.m. UTC time is hard to make, it's obviously later in other parts of the world, earlier, is, uh, earlier in, in others. So um, this is not the perfect time but it's the best time nope. we had available for now and individual projects will also have their own meetings to to organize and schedule and um, work with after that after we get to that point um, so yeah there's there's plenty of places um, as Bruno was saying we have our Gitter channel for the GSOC we have the community discourse uh, which is on our community.jenkins.io site. So uh, lots of places to communicate, engage, uh, ask questions, especially. Um, Gitter and community are excellent places to ask questions and get um, insight from other community members. Uh, a lot of folks are active in the chat and uh, are quick to respond. We were talking earlier about, uh, I think it's like 800 plus messages have been sent in the GSOC channel. Uh, it's only been a few weeks. That's crazy. Uh, it's a lot. Yes, and so. Chris Turn handled most of them. That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, big thanks to Chris for actually handling uh, like half those messages himself. Very impressive. Okay. And great. Any other questions on that one? Cool. All right. Uh, next up is the CD Foundations Award, uh, CD Foundation Award. So. Uh, this is something that uh, we've participated in years prior. Um, this year, we're just going about the process a little differently, but same idea applies. Uh, the CDF awards are ways to highlight and celebrate people that really put their all into this and have, uh, you know, as you can see here for Jenkins, they're a valuable uh, advocate, they're a valuable contributor, they're helping out with security in a really stellar way. Um, and these are our specific awards for Jenkins. Um, with each of these awards, you can nominate someone to, uh, so that they can hopefully be in the running for it. Um, what we've done this year is instead of having the CD Foundation host the issues and the nominations on their rep repository, each project is hosting them in their own repository. So this year, we've got three separate issues for Jenkins. Again, most valuable advocate, most valuable contributor, and security MVP. 
Um, they're all separate issues in and of their own right. They have a similar content here, uh, but the idea is that you can nominate someone, uh, share reasons why that you think they should be nominated, uh, and then people are going to just uh, kind of support that with stuff like emojis, voting, um, and then once the nominations have closed, um, the CD Foundation will then gather all the names and then voting will take place at a later time uh, with a Google form. Um, so uh, down the line, there'll be a more formal way to vote. Right now, it's all happening in the GitHub issue and stuff like emojis and whatnot. Uh, I don't know that we have any nominations on our uh, tickets as of yet. So uh, please, by all means, take time, check them out. Um, they're in the issue tracker for Jenkins.io GitHub. So uh, they are readily available. And they also have, uh, first off, these little trophy emojis. Um, but more importantly, they also have the community tag which is something that I created recently to make sure we can highlight these sort of posts uh, a little bit more clearly and have uh, the community realize that that's something they can take on and engage with and not have to worry about um, fixing something. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, so a couple notes about the awards. Um, so you do need to have a GitHub account to nominate or vote. Uh, last year's winners cannot win the same award this year. Uh, however, they're going to be nominated for other awards, so um, that doesn't make them ineligible for anything. Um, you can see here, like Basil Crow won Most Valuable Jenkins Contributor last year. He can't win it this year, but he could still be nominated for Most Jen Valuable Jenkins Advocate. Uh, so yeah, and then, yeah, and again, the CD Foundation Award site has a lot more information about all the different awards uh, and their processes and stuff like that. So uh, it has some information, a lot of the information we have posted in our blog post now, though, so um, pretty much the same information can yeah. be found here. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you can rely on our blog post as well. And again, big, big shout outs and thanks to Alyssa and the CD Foundation for uh, organizing this and getting everything set up so that we can proceed with this, uh, the award nominations. Uh, and just, yeah, nominations do close next Friday, March 3rd. Uh, so if there is anyone you want to nominate, please don't hesitate. Make sure you go into that issue and just even if it's not a super detailed reason why right now, if you want to just put it in there so you know it's there, uh, perfectly fine. You can always edit things after the fact. That's not a big deal. Uh, and then uh, voting itself will open five, uh, five days later on Wednesday, March 8th. Voting will close at the end of March on the 28th. And then uh, the results will actually be announced at CDCon in 2023, where the winners will be given their awards and recognition. Uh, any other questions on the Jenkins Awards 2023? Cool. All right, then. Thank you. Uh, next up, the document transition to Java 17. Uh, so this is something that with the release of Debian 12 coming in this spring, uh, sometime in April or May, uh, there is going to be a transition of the documentation on Jenkins to move from using Java 11 in things like the install guide to using Java 17. Uh, this is just for the fact that Java 17 has more functionality available and it's fully supported at this time. Uh, Java 11 is still fully supported. It's going to continue to be fully supported. It's not going to, uh, we're not dropping support for Java 11 anytime soon, but uh, in the um, interest of trying to make sure we're ahead of the game or ahead of everyone else, transitioning to Java 17 in the documentation provides a better baseline for people to start from. And again, the functionality is more uh, abundant there. It's uh, more testing is available. Uh, it's just better experience overall for development as well. So uh, the idea is that we're gonna move the documentation to use Java 17, and that'll be throughout the documentation as well. Um, the Windows and Linux install docs will also be transitioned from Java 11 to Java 17. Again, it's making sure that this is consistent across every platform, not just one or another. Uh, and then uh, I still need to do this, uh, but I need to email Tim uh, Jacome, who is our Jenkins release lead officer, and let him know that this is gonna be something that changes just so he's not 
surprised all of a sudden when Java 11 uh, now says Java 17 everywhere. So uh, I'll be sure to take that action item and make an email him before this before the end of the day today. Um, and again, this is all coinciding with the release of Debian 12. This isn't just some independent idea we had. Um, Debian 12 is not going to roll with OpenJDK 11. So uh, it's part of their overall next steps too. Okay, uh, so end of life checklist. Uh, again, the end of life checklist is something that we want to have going forward. Uh, we don't have anything like this right now. It's really just searching and finding the places that may mention the, the end of life product or platform. So uh, things like Ubuntu 18, Alpine 3.14 and 15, uh, these are all coming end of life this year. CentOS 7 is going to be end of life next year. Uh, so the fast, the sooner we get ahead of it, have a checklist ready and know what places to look for all these things, uh, the better, the more prepared we'll be when that time comes. Um, so uh, in previous sessions, we were talking about checking the, obviously checking the documentation, checking the packaging sites uh, and packaging repository, check the releases repository for anything coming out, container images, uh, we have the updates.jenkins.io site for any references. Um, so there are a lot of places to check out, and I'm sure that there's more that we haven't come up with or listed here yet. Um, but uh, if anyone has ideas or any um, best practices that they might have had in previous experience with what to look for or places that we could also look for, uh, by all means, feel free to share, message in the, in the Doc Skitter channel, uh, anything like that at all. And we are going to be looking at a couple of site generation projects for Google Summer of Code, or at least one site generation project for Google Summer of Code. Um, so this may come up in that instance where we're moving doc the site, um, some of the content might need to change or be modified in some way, shape or form when it comes down to it. But um, ultimately, this is just something that we want to, uh, this is gonna help us do our, our uh, due diligence as we, come to the end of life on these things. And then, uh, so prep for CentOS 7 end of life. Um, again, this is something that Mark has proposed. CentOS 7's end of life is coming uh, June 30th next year. So um, there are a lot of reasons to not have it anymore. Um, Mark's arguments and bias is that because it's looking at agent command line, versions uh, and just older versions of dependencies and, and operations, it's not the best choice going forward. It's not gonna be viable after next year. So uh, really the idea is to clean this up, make sure that we're providing the most up-to-date and um, uh, useful information to folks who are browsing through the documentation. So um, if that means CentOS 7 is not gonna be used any longer, that means making sure that it's not uh, misinforming someone in the documentation as well. Uh, again, these are a lot more uh, just of the reasons why uh, deprecating and removing the CentOS 7 information is a good idea. Stuff like the fact that it's been, uh, the doc container has been deprecated since uh, this past September. Um, it's not supported by the RPM installer. Uh, it's been in maintenance since 2020. And again, the end of life is happening next June. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why we should be moving on to the next option, uh, the next set. And uh, we have actually started including the Alma Linux, uh, Rocky Linux, and uh, Oracle Linux information in documentation. Mark's gone ahead and started putting that into some areas. Uh, and there will be a JEP for uh, containing all of these things. This is clear, this is going to be more than one ticket uh, to take care of. So the JEP will help bridge that and connect everything together. That way we can uh, keep track of the removal and changes that we're making. Uh, and then the last item on the list is G Google Summer Code Prep. Uh, so, uh, first and foremost, uh, Chris, thanks to Chris Stern for updating the Google Summer of Code status page. Uh, the Google published their list yesterday, so we were able to update our page yesterday afternoon. 
Uh, so you can see GSOC 23, we've been accepted, yay. Um, but, and there's an application mentoring org application form here for anyone interested. Um, like we mentioned, we'll have weekly office hours, uh, Thursdays at 16 UTC. And the project ideas list is uh, very live and very available to check it out and see what the projects uh, are starting to look like. Uh, so yeah, so uh, again, weekly office hours, they're hosted by uh, Jean-Marc Messen. Those are gonna be Thursdays, 4 p.m. UTC. Um, the agenda's there. There are two different agendas right now in the uh, calendar meeting invite. Uh, it has both last year's and this year's. And the, the nice thing is, um, I don't know who uh, took care of it, but the 2022 agenda does actually, the first line is saying, hey, if you're looking for 2023, it's right here. So um, either way, uh, you'll be able to get to the correct link. Um, and then I think the last item in here was something that might have come up during the previous Asia Docs office hours uh, with Mark, uh, Rajiv, and Meg. Um, but one of the projects for Google Summer Code is site generation for Jenkins.io, moving from uh, what we are currently on, which is Offstruct, to something like Antora or another version documentation. Um, and it looks like Rajiv is willing to mentor that project. Uh, yeah, and the, like we said, the idea is to use Antora to build Jenkins.io instead of uh, Ostruct and then just move everything over accordingly. Um, that would allow us to use version specific documentation as well. So we can uh, have detailed instructions for the LTS versus the weekly versus an older version of it that we're still supporting. Um, so this is just going to be a really nice way for us to make the documentation cleaner and the site a lot more user friendly in terms of navigation. So that covered everything I had on the, on the agenda today. Does anyone have anything else they want to share, highlight, mention? Uh, I have a question. It's not exactly yeah. related to this uh, docs, but uh, no can I ask it? Yeah. yeah, go for it. So I was going through this plugin site API and mm -hmm. uh, what I was thinking like uh, the plugin site uh, it should be pulling the data from the API, but when I inspected the side it's pulling the data from algolia and i'm not able to understand how i mean and the documentation is not clear in the plugin site api so i'm very confused where it's getting the data from uh and uh as far as the algolia stuff i that is new that was something that um gavin mogan was recently able to take care of and uh fix up because the search was a lot more basic prior. That's just something we added within the last couple of months. So uh, now the the full all of the Jenkins searches are done through Algolia, um, but that is separate from the rest of the site uh, in a sense. I, I, I'm, I think the Algolia is a little bit independent of the rest of the site. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure how that works, uh, but um, is the question, why is it pulling uh, from? No, uh, my actual sorry. question was, where is the plugin site API being used and what is the endpoint for it? Because in okay. the GitHub page, it's plugins.jenkins.io and I'm very confused what's happening. Gotcha, okay. Um, uh, I am not 100% sure about the backend API stuff as far as that goes. Uh, um, Bruno, do you have uh, an idea of um, that? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so uh, the only, the, I, I really don't know the answer to that, Santan. I'm sorry about that. Um, I don't know either. I yeah. think this is a good question, though, to find out from uh, the rest of the community team. So what I'm going to do is, uh, let me see here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Sounds reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> um, or uh, I, I can take care of that. 
uh, I'll also throw out the option if you feel comfortable or if you want to. Um, you can check in one of the Gitter channels. We have a bunch of different ones, um, newcomer contributions, advocacy and outreach, but I think um, newcomer contributions would probably be the best place to ask. That's one of the more active channels with uh, a lot of different users. I know Gavin Mogan is pretty active in that channel uh, as far as helping to guide people. And Gavin knows a lot about the back end, that API side of, uh, especially the plugin site. It's a little separate from uh, the Jenkins to IO site. Like they're all the, they're all connected, but they're separate. So um, yeah, it's, it's a little weird in the back end of it, but, but if you want to, if you feel comfortable and want to ask there, you can, again, you don't have to, I will uh, be more than happy to take this up with the team and, and check in with folks because it might, um, it might be that someone no, else knows too. No, no, I, I will ask in the newcomer contributions channel. That's a good idea. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, and again, if that's something that ends up being a deeper discussion, it can be taken offline on, or it can be taken out of Gitter into the um, discourse site, the community.jenkins.io site, where we can have real uh, in more in-depth discussions there, as opposed to the chat, which can kind of get bogged down depending on um, the number of responses and folks and threads and everything else going on. Um, the, the discourse is just a lot easier to keep track of and um, be alerted about. So, um, but that's that'll be decided at that point. Uh, so, yeah, great question. Thank you very much, Santan. I'm gonna. I'm now. I'm curious too. So I'm probably just gonna ask around for my own information anyway. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I'll, and I'll keep an eye out on the Gitter channel, obviously, of course, to make sure. Um, but yeah, that's that's great. Thank you very much for inquiring about that. It's something I don't necessarily think about myself too too often. Um, I'm documentation officer for Jenkins, so. Uh, my concerns are mostly with the documentation and and how the how it um, reads and looks and stuff like that. So uh, I don't necessarily touch the the API end of it, the back end, the calls and responses. So um, yeah, no, th th it's great perspective. Thank you very much for bringing it. Okay, and does anyone else have any questions for uh, the session today or any other comments? That a no. Uh, so then I'll go ahead and, and stop the recording. Um, it'll probably be available within 24 to 48 hours. Um, Mark usually takes care of the uploads and he's out today and tomorrow. I can so help with that little... if you want to. Oh, you can. Oh, awesome, yeah. Bruno. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Then never mind. Uh, I'm a. I'm just talking for the sake of hearing myself talk then in that case. Thank you, Bruno. Let's do that. You're welcome. Um, yeah, no, I'll stop the recording now.